I have been inspired by some um, some bread paintings that I've seen on Pinterest. So I thought it would be fun to do a lesson for our Inspired to Paint site on painting bread and cheese. So I had done another painting for um, our members on Inspired to Paint, but the next day I was still so excited about it that I added a little cheese knife and um, some Kalamata uh, olives. So here I am, I'm just kind of drawing the, uh, the drawing out here as I'm just kind of figuring out where I'm going to place it on my canvas. And this particular canvas is a, 14, let's see, 13 by 18 oil primed C15 linen, I believe, that I've toned first with just raw umber. Um, the light that I use is a 5000 Kelvin bulb. What I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm realizing that I didn't like the placement, so I'm wiping the whole thing off. I wanted the cheese over a little bit further to the right, so now I'm, I'm basically starting all over. Better to fix that now in the beginning than um, after I got a lot of elements painted. So I'm just re redrawing um, the, the setup and positioning it more correctly on my surface. Uh, but back to the lighting, I do light my setups with a 5000 Kelvin bulb, which is a, a cool light. And um, so this light that's hitting the setup that you see there in the box is also hitting my canvas. Um, I also have a, I have a, my patio doors that lead out to my patio uh, faces south. And right now it's winter time. So the sun comes in a little bit more into my, on my south doors, south facing doors. And that's kind of where you're seeing a little bit of the glare where I've painted the knife uh, dark shapes, but I, I changed that here in a second. But I'm still just trying to mass inch um, or just, you know, find the shapes. Uh, I was just using raw umber for that drawing and now I'm adding some transparent oxide red that's kind of thinned down, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre in that mix to kind of get some of what I kind of feel is the local color of each of those elements. The um, shadow side of the cheese, now I'm doing the light side of the, the bread that's facing the light. So that cheese is basically a wedge and I had picked off some parts of the cheese so that that, that front That's pretty uh, complicated when you look at the bread with all the little holes and everything. So it's really important to just really simplify in the beginning a simple light shape and a simple shadow shape. So here I'm again, I'm trying to um, there's some reflections into the knife that I'm trying to paint, correcting some of the shadow shapes. This is just sourdough bread that I broke off a piece. And the olives, that one was a really dark violet um, olive right there. And then a little bit more of a reddish one and a couple green ones. You can't see my, my palette, but I'm just trying to figure out that green color. I think I used uh, black, yellow ochre, um, and some cad yellow in the mix. So I've, I've moved the palette over because I was, or the, the camera, because I, Realized I was seeing a lot of glare, or you guys were seeing a lot of glare while you were watching this. That's the cast shadow from the knife. Now here, just trying to get a background value. I'm just using straight raw umber right now. So I, this is a pretty simple composition. There's, you know, it's just bread, cheese, and some olives with the knife. Um, and so there's a lot of negative space around this particular painting. Well, I moved the camera again and I shut my curtains so you can see how much better the color is. But um, the, uh, where was I?
Again, I'm just making sure, you know, just refining my shapes a little bit. I'm not really worried about detail at this point. Just really trying to um, grab the basic about shape. If you like this video um, and you're not a member of Inspired to Paint, please check out um, inspiredtopaint.com. I have I have over a hundred videos on the site, and in if you become a premium member, either all access or a VIP member or a Robbins member, um, you I go through the painting process. So I talk through the whole process. You get to you get the um, reference image to paint along with me and uh, complete palette shots the entire time that I'm painting. So I just thought for this one, it would just be fun to set up the camera and let me paint without having to talk and think. Um, and then I could come back and do a voiceover. But the other painting I did has has the palette shot and the reference image. So you can follow along as, as I paint. And of course, this is in oils. All of my paintings are in oils. I have a pretty typical palette. I use cadmium, or titanium white, cadmium lemon, cad yellow medium, cad orange, cad red. I use yellow ochre, Indian yellow, raw umber, transparent earth red, and then alizarin, French ultramarine, viridian, and ivory black is, is pretty much my palette. I use Gamsol as my solvent and Neo McGilp by Gamblin uh, for my, my medium. And the brush I'm using is, is a, it's called a Vienna uh, Filbert, hog bristle Filbert. It's actually um, a synthetic Filbert that I like very much. Um, Royal, it's a Royal brush manufacturer and I sell these on my Inspired to Paint site. If you just go to the shop, you'll see brushes. Putting on the highlights of the olives. They're so shiny. So in order to get something really shiny, you have to have a, a good amount of value change between the area around the, uh, the highlight and the area around the highlight. The more you blend it out, the less shiny it is. So I'm trying to keep a good value change between the highlight and the area around the highlight. And I, I'm using a... a called a Sable Tech flat here on this one. It's just a small, I think it was like a number four or a six, I can't remember. Again, the highlight. I jump around a lot in my paintings. I, you know, you noticed I worked on the bread a little bit. Now I'm working on the olives because um, painting is like a puzzle to me. It's little pieces here, little pieces there. So now I'm moving on to the little knife that's laying flat on the tabletop. Um, and when I do that, it, you know, if I'm focusing in on the olives, then it gives my eye a break from the bread. And then when I go back to bread, I have a, um, a fresh eye and I can see, you know, mistakes or value problems that um, aren't working. So that's why I jump around a lot. I just putting little pieces of puzzles here and there. You saw when I did my hand like that, I was kind of checking the angle of the hand, um, the handle of the knife. It's coming out at a slight angle. And of course, from my perspective, it's quite uh, foreshortened. And as I'm, as I'm talking through this, I'm looking at the setup from that particular angle from that, where the camera is set up. And that's, that's a really nice angle as well. A little bit more foreground there on the left-hand side. Maybe I'll move my easel and paint it again from a different perspective. So those are the that's the reflection from the bread onto the knife. That shadow underneath this knife that you see there um, and the and the table color, the edge color that I'm putting in, I'm really trying to 
create the illusion, you know, that that knife is really kind of sticking straight at us. So I'm trying to have some harder edges there. It takes me a while um, to get what I want, but I think I finally get there. I also, later on, I realize I might have the handle a little bit too long, so I shorten it a bit. There are some subtle reflections in the tabletop. It's just a piece of, um, it's actually shelving that I bought at Home Depot um, that I have the bread sitting on. And there's some subtle reflections. That turquoise trunk underneath, I actually bought it at an antique store in Scottsdale. I teach there um, quite a bit in the Scottsdale Art School, but I found that at, at, a, at a shop and, and bought it and I, I use it a lot, but um, I, use it, I used it there just to raise the setup up a bit. So it was at the level um, just slightly above eye level or below eye level. So I'm really um, trying to darken that left-hand side as you come into the painting. So I'm using the palette knife right there with kind of a light ochre tone on right on the edge. You know, you're always going to have a highlight wherever the plane changes um, if it's in line with, you know, if it's not already in shadow, but so that plane changes right there. And so I'm putting a little bit of uh, a, a sharp edged with my palette knife. So creating those kind of little subtle reflections. I'm not happy with that cat shadow. It's really cold and I, um, I use transparent earth red and French ultramarine a lot for some really dark shadows, but I had too much French ultramarine. It was just too cold. So I come back and warm it up a little bit later. But so. Um, there's some reflected light onto the shadow side of the cheese. That wedge shape kind of, it did kind of curve up a little bit on that um, back side. So I'm lightening that area a little bit. I'm now using a palette knife and some of the um, more lit areas of the broken bread to get a little bit more texture and a little bit more, um, I don't, the word lacy comes to mind, but just where, you know, little tiny specks of, of bread kind of sticks out and catches the light a little bit more. I'm trying to keep the values pretty simple in the shadow shape. And I, I like to say, I let my shadows be a whisper and I let my light do the talking. And um, because when you're looking into the shadow, you're seeing all that detail. So you wanna put in all that detail. I'm stepping away now from my easel just to see what it looks like from, from you know five, six feet away. But so when you paint the shadow, you have to paint the shadow as if you're, you're looking at, um, with your peripheral vision and you're not seeing that much detail. So I'm gonna try and my goal is to put a lot more detail, texture, bolder brush works in the light area and have my shadowy areas be a little bit quieter. So these are just little pieces of cheese that I they picked off. Um, I, you know, I, if you follow my work, uh, I do love all that little debris on the tabletop. Um, I think that makes the, the, the still life a little bit more organic, a little bit more 
realistic and not so perfect. Again, stepping away and taking a look at the bread. That area right there, I'm, I didn't like that there was a, a dark line all the way down. So I'm trying to figure out how I can connect that light shape. So I'm, I am putting, I'm adding some yellow ochre to the raw umber, um, so just so I can lighten the uh, background a little bit more around that right hand side. My setup's being lit from the left, so the light will travel across to the right. I use my finger a lot to soften edges. Seems to be a really, a really good tool. So there's a really strong light on the that real edge part of that knife. So I use the palette knife there to get a nice crisp edge. The total time, um, yeah, I've sped this up, obviously. I think it's 150%. I think the whole time I've painted was um, probably just a little over an hour that um, I did this. And but I and I, it's not that I consider it done, but in an hour, I get a really, really good foundation. And then I will, you know, take a break and uh, walk away from it, maybe go take a walk or do some laundry or something so my eye I give my eye a rest and then I come back and um, I'll slow down quite a bit I love the fact that I could connect that shadow from the knife handle to the shadow underneath the um, the uh, shelf but in in this particular stage I do paint really fast and I'm painting really intuitively I I find that the more I uh, the faster I paint, sometimes it's, you know, you don't have time to second guess your decisions. And so you're just putting paint down um, and, and you're, and you're working with what you're, what you're doing at that point. And then again, after I get everything down, um, I had to put out some more raw umbra I'd use so much, but, you know, then I can slow down. I have a tendency to do a lot of things fast. I walk fast, I eat fast, I talk <laughs> fast. I think that comes from being a mom. Um, when you got little kids, you, you, gotta, you gotta hurry up and eat. Or um, I'm actually adding a little bit of Iridian to that mix because I wanna see, you know, I, I am being influenced, one, by my jacket that I'm wearing and two, by the, that turquoise uh, um, trunk. So I thought, well, let's just, let's put a little bit of green in there, which would be nice, a nice compliment. Blue green would be a nice compliment to that um, orangey color. Trying to lighten that area again where the, you know, where that uh, bread rolls around and getting that lighter. So I'm, I am trying to create a little bit more form. And now I'm, I'm also trying to create a real hard edge around that particular olive and the bread. The same thing there. That, a harder edge on that green olive against the cast shadow from the tree, uh, cheese. Just adding a little bit more color to the, the shelf.
putting a little bit of light edge on some of the boards kind of in you know around the middle of the canvas in that focal point keeping your eye within that center of interest a little bit more green I thought well I put it in the background let's put a little bit in the foreground and I step back to take a look and say yeah I, I like that so this is a fan brush that I'm using a fan brush um, just to soften I didn't like that that was little specks of cheese back there and I didn't like where they were placed so I'm, I'm adding a few more crumbles cheese crumbles I just need a glass of wine back there <laughs> I think the next one I do I'm gonna add a glass of wine this might be my year of bread paintings I'm gonna make it paint it and eat it Yeah, a little bit more light again trying to create a little bit more form of course when i did that i also realized then that maybe some of the the areas of the bread where it was cut and it's a little bit more brown um the value might be a bit strong so i have i come back later and i lighten some of those darker brownish burnt areas of the bread again the the um this is just the fan brush calming down brush strokes This cheese is from, we have a local cheese maker here, Beehive Cheese, they make the best cheese. Put in a little cast shadow underneath there to set it firmly down on the table. Little bit of a cast shadow I'm coming near the end a few little finishing touches I think the camera quit but there's the finished painting um, from the camera so you can see that, that again this is just after an hour of painting so I'll let this sit for a while and I'll come back maybe tomorrow and refine it just a little bit more but I hope you enjoyed that please check out my inspired to paint online course with my good friend Shanna Coons and I we have over 200 instructional videos on landscape still life and portraiture so I hope you enjoy that and I hope you're inspired to paint Thanks for watching.